It was December 2013 when the financial officer of Apple walked into the office of the CEO Tim Cook. Tim, I have some bad news for you. We have to report our first quarterly revenue decline since 2003 and we have to report our first profit decline in a decade. Let me explain what is going on at Apple. Lately Apple has struggled to meet the expectations of Wall Street analysts and investors. Apple reported their first quarterly revenue decline since 2003, sending the stock price tumbling. Reasons for the declines are a decrease in growth rate, increasing competition in the global smartphone market and increasing fears over innovation. This resulted in Apple reporting its first profit decline in a decade late last year. Let's look at the rest of their conversation. Oh no, what can we do? These numbers do not meet the expectations of the Wall Street analysts and investors. I don't know. We need some serious help. Maybe a method called earnings management could help us out. Then we can manage our reported earnings to avoid decreases. Can you explain what you mean? Last month, I read a paper of Berksteller and Ditchelv, in which they looked at earnings management. The paper finds evidence on whether how and why firms avoid reporting earnings decreases and losses by managing their earnings upwards. It seems that companies try to maintain a consistent pattern of increasing earnings. Because of our recent decrease in earnings, we will break our growth pattern for the first time in 10 years. OK, what did they find? First of all, the researchers find that companies manage reported earnings to avoid earnings decreases. The incentive to manage earnings becomes stronger with the length of the previous period of earnings increases. Let's look at this graph from the paper. In a situation of no earnings management, the distribution would be symmetric. But as you can see this is not the case around zero, indicating that firms manage their earnings to avoid decreases. Tim, can you see the change around zero? The results also indicate that earnings management to avoid earnings decreases is common. 8 to 12% of the companies engage in this. When looking at losses, the graphs show similar results. In this case even 30 to 44% of the companies engage in earnings management to avoid losses. Wait a minute, now it's going too fast. You might wonder how the researchers find these results. First, they calculated the expected distribution without earnings management. This would be a normal distribution with mean zero, and a standard deviation of one. To test for discontinuity at zero, they calculated the difference between the actual number and the expected number of observations, divided by the estimated standard deviation of the difference. The researchers did this for the sample as a whole, and they also divided the sample in three categories, based on the length of the preceding period of earnings increases. An irregularity near zero would indicate earnings management. To test the frequency of earnings management, the researchers calculated the difference between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies. I hope you understand the methods. Let's go back to the conversation. OK. Now I know that other companies use earnings management to manage reported earnings. But how do they manage their earnings? What can we do? I understand your point, but the authors did not investigate which methods are used to avoid earnings decreases, which is related to our problem. However, they investigate several methods that firms use to avoid losses. They find evidence that cash flow from operations and changes in working capital are frequently used to manage earnings. The authors say that similar methods can be used to avoid earnings decreases. It seems like these companies were in a similar position as we are. What motivated them to manage their earnings? The authors find two theories that could explain the results. The first explanation is that managers avoid reporting earnings decreases and losses to decrease the costs imposed on the firm in transactions with stakeholders. For example, banks offer better terms because the firm is less likely to default on loan payments. The second explanation is based on prospect theory. For decision makers the value function is steepest around the reference point which is zero. Therefore, if the outcome, for example earnings change, is slightly lower than zero, the value for the decision maker declines most. This provides incentives to manage earnings. OK, I understand what you are saying. However, I am not sure if earnings management is the right method for us. The financial officer and Tim have shown you a real-life problem. Eventually, Apple reported a decline in profit and revenue. This resulted in shareholders starting to panic and stock price declines. I hope this video helped you to understand the paper. Thank you for watching. Created using Powtoon.